On Saturday, October 12th, Typhoon Hagibis reached Japan. Expected to be the worst storm to hit Japan in the last 60 years, the Meteorological Agency issued the highest warning of level 5. It was the first time this level was issued for Tokyo. In the evening, the storm would reach the metropolitan region, one of the largest in the world, with more than 40 million people. And also the place where I live. We knew it was going to come, so the day before we went to the supermarket. I had a day off, so we went early. Later in the afternoon many goods such as bread, meat and instant ramen would already be sold out. Then the day came. It was a little rain in the morning, the sky grey. The supermarket was closed for the day. At around 1 pm the trains in the area would be suspended. We charged our batteries in case we would be cut off of energy, put bottles of water into the toilets and filled the bathtub with water to have enough of it should we need it. We prepared rice for the next day in case we would run out of power. The rain started to increase. Then it lessened a bit. Then increased again. At 6.22 the earth shook. A magnitude 5.7 earthquake had hit Tokyo's neighboring prefecture Chiba. The prefecture we live in is to the other side of Tokyo, so we experienced the quake only as a soft shake. The strongest earthquake I have experienced so far was 6.5. It was okay, but still every time the earth starts to move, I tense up a little and start sweating in anticipation. The news started to cover overflowing rivers and rivers close to doing so. Evacuation warnings were issued for the first areas. The area around the train station next to ours had to be evacuated. The closest river to our house is 200 meters down the road, too close for feeling safe. However, we are on the fourth floor of a concrete building and probably Considering landslides on hills, staying home was our safest bet. Almost all channels covered the storm the whole evening. In our apartment, we couldn't see much outside, but we could hear it. In case you're wondering what it sounds like sitting in a building inside of a tropical storm, like this. At one point I tried to open the window. It was pretty dark, so you won't see much, but I think the audio will do the job here as well. At 10 pm the wind had weakened and our apartment became silent. The lion part of the typhoon had passed. Around 11 pm still having electricity and running water, with the rain still falling outside, we went to bed. I woke up at around 7.30. Outside it was a beautiful day, a blue sky, 26 degrees. As if nothing had happened. I made my way to the closest river. It seemed to be fine and albeit on a higher level than usual, looked like it had stayed in its bed the night before. The closest large river, the one responsible for the evacuation at the station next to us, showed the same image. Higher than usual, but nothing to worry about. Still, I wouldn't have liked to be in one of the houses right next to the dam the night before. While the JR East Railway Company had announced most services wouldn't continue before the afternoon, from the river I could already see trains moving across the bridge. It seemed like they had resumed service. This was at 8.30 in the morning on a Sunday, therefore also the station was empty and there didn't seem to be any larger impact caused by the storm. After the previous typhoon had hit in August this year on a Sunday night and trains hadn't continued to work on Monday morning until after 7 am. This caused masses of people to wait inside and around the stations. Going up a close by hill I could see some fallen trees, branches and lots of leaves. One small shrine statues had been knocked over waiting to be repaired. During the previous storm a large old cherry tree had fallen onto the way which made my way to work a little more challenging. This time all of the remaining trees were still intact. Later at our supermarket all the shelves had been refilled and we could restock without issues. All in all we had been lucky this time. 
we were in an area in which the typhoon thankfully did little harm. If anything, being able to return to relatively normal within such a short amount of time and the little effect the storm had compared to its size and strength shows the preparedness of the Japanese people for disasters of this kind. Still, not everyone was as lucky as us. A river on the way to my work, the Tama River, had overflown. The area around one of the stations on my commute had been covered 1.5 meters deep in water. The Chikuma, Japan's longest river, broke, partially submerging houses up to the second floor and also these bullet trains in Nagano, the city I've previously lived in. In total more than a dozen rivers left their beds in the course of the evening, flooding hundreds of houses. More than 200,000 households were left without power on Sunday, and at least 25 people lost their lives due to the typhoon.